around the palace, you see these other cats, and they're saying, wow, a columnar, piece of columnar basalt that's convex at the top. I'm totally into that. That would be all warm and stuff, and I can sit there. But they're actually pissed because of all these other cats. You can see their little heads here, their little ears, who are hogging the palace and not leaving. So they're like waiting and waiting to get in. This cat's looking in the porch forlornly because he wants to get inside and move up into, hopefully, get into the aquarium room up here. So this is just a sketch. This thing is a passive solar building. Um, the angle of the sun is such, I mean, the way that the, 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 these brows and porch roofs are created, it shades the space inside in the summertime. And then during the winter, the light just streams right into the space and warms the little kitty up. OK, and then there's a spiral stair that takes them up to this kind of cosmic viewing platform, of course. You know, when you do workshops with cats, you know, they have all these needs that get expressed. Um, so this is what it looks like. They jump up onto the porch here, and they, they are sort of faced with this question. Should I go into the lower solar porch with the very soft silk pillow laced with catnip? Or um, should I go up higher? Hmm, this is a pretty neat little, little wind shield device here. Maybe I'll sit under it. So this is actually kind of Neolithic Jetson here is what you're seeing with the, <laughs> the cob and the plexiglass and the, and the solar powered battery system. Um, so they come up the spiral stair and they're like, hmm, maybe I'll go into the solar powered aquarium room and hang out with these other cats on another silk pillow. Or they can go up to the highest level to the 360 viewing platform. And this is quite a special device. You know those electric heaters when you're sitting outside at a restaurant? This thing's a passive solar device. It catches light up in a prismatic skylight and forces the heat down that washes over the cats when they're sitting up here. And it works really well um, uh, all the time. OK, so that's what the roof looks like. It's all made out of tin cans that are sort of fit together like shingles. The little railings for their little kitty paws are woven together out of local um, apple branches featuring mosaic glass. There's actually a, a cat effigy of the cat god on this thing. And then uh, you can see the shingles over the spiral stair. This is what it looks like. Whoa. Quite spacey. Oh, Eva, Eva Lucian, Eva Miller is the lead natural builder. She's sitting right up here. So if you want to ask about building um, any sort of palace, hamster palace, dog palace, uh, Eva understands all about these things. You know, once you have a cat palace, you're going to have to have a dog palace. This is the battery system here. So the photovoltaic system is on the roof here. It's integrated into the, into the shingles. And uh, all the juice goes into the battery system. And that powers the lighting system. So this thing twinkles at night with all these little LED lights. And then, uh, and then it powers the filtration system of the, uh, of the aquarium. Now, I'm quite serious about this because um, this is all about delight and beauty and the unexpected. And it's also a strategy for getting all these poodle owners and cat owners to suddenly be caring about sustainability, too, because now you're going to see this stuff in magazines that they read. So, but why not? I mean, if it's true that the world around us has been almost entirely designed until lately by white men between 65 and, and seven, uh, 35 and 70, maybe it's time for the rest of humanity and our fuller spectrum of emotion to be expressed as the joyous you know, in the joyous process of transforming our whole culture. One of the keys to all of this is to see that the world, that the glass is certainly more than half full and that the world is, a, is bursting with abundance. The air is air, there every time you take a breath. Gravity is working all the time and we are all surrounded by way more people than we can ever know, you know, to make friends. And yet so many people feel alone among thousands of people who could otherwise be friends. Andy Singer came to Portland and did this cartoon. And he said, OK, I see how the grid works. Everyone's walking around going, oh, my experience of social isolation is, is so unique. I'm so alone and separate. You know, and even the dogs are bummed out. <laughs> and Andy's like, OK. And, and then on the other hand, it can be like this, where this can become a nexus of connection and actually transform people's lives. You know, and that's true, Andy. But at the same time, this is not before. This is before. This is, what we, this is how we develop language, all forms of cultural expression, cosmology, mathematics, everything emerged from this intersection in space and time in some fashion. This is only a, a, a momentary interlude of the last couple of thousand years that will shortly be coming to, the chapter will be coming to a close as we re, 
We reclaim this place as a place of connection, if, you know, without permission, quite if necessary. But it's not about painting flowers in the streets or kiosks or incorporating all these sustainability initiatives or, or making tweaked out fire hydrants, you know, it's, or, or gardens or corn or flowers or whatever. Like, this is a catalyst. This, is, this, this makes you feel totally at home. But what comes of this, as these people go to work and stand up and speak more loudly because they feel, they've realized that they have power, or they become more engaged in the political process, or they practice these patterns in, 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 in the designs that they do, that changes the world. But this is, this is where, it, where it starts. And it's a principle that doesn't just apply to streets. It applies all over the place. Now here we have people, you know, not just saying, oh, the streets should be for people, not just for cars. Now it's becoming sacred. Here we have two neighbors who have fallen in love, and their neighbors are standing up and reading poetry and prose and saying, you know, we love you, we want to live with you, thank you so much, we're part of this whole community, you've given us so much. This is one of the lead natural builders of the community. Hundreds of neighbors sitting around together as well as families and friends in this village heart where before there was only the Roman grid. And then it happens again. And it happens again. Here's one of the most conservative men in the United States, the former chair of the, of the Chamber of Commerce of Cincinnati, died in the wool, conservative, uh, born again Christian. And here he is, for the first time in his life, doing the dance that his ancestors used to do in a great spiral in the middle of this truly American piazza. Tears streaming down his cheeks, and he walks up to the bride and the groom, and he says, I've realized that we have the same God, no matter what we call it. So I just want to um, read a quote from one of the most misunderstood um, of Americans. This is the person that um, said that form follows function. He was the uh, great teacher of Frank Lloyd Wright, the uh, one who, um, who really began the notion of organic architecture. Um, so Frank Lloyd Wright called him the master teacher. And besides saying, you know, form follows function, that was so misunderstood, you know, the Bauhaus got a hold of that. Um, Mies van der Rohe and, and, and the whole sort of cult, culture of modernism. But Lewis Sullivan didn't mean that buildings should look like vending machines, steel and glass boxes that stand in disassociation um, and reflect really nothing back. What he, what he meant was something quite different, that the function and the form had, really the function was love and the form should be expressing that, exu an exuberant expression of that. So this is what he also said what he really said. It is the destiny of all people to create a fit, abiding place, a safe and beautiful world. So thank you very much for having me here tonight. Thank you for coming on behalf of City Repair in Portland. <laughs>